Hello, hello, it is time for lesson 10A.2, solving multi-step equations. So now we're gonna kind of put everything that we have learned about together here. We've learned how to combine like terms, we've learned how to use a distributed property. We've learned how to solve one steps, two steps, variables on both sides. Um, so now we're putting it all together. The goal is still the same, the goal of the equation. And that's the last question in your homework packet, by the way. What is the goal of solving any equation? To find the value of the variable, you're welcome. You will apply that knowledge to solving equations with several steps. And basically the same thing's going on. Number one, keep change change. Number two, if you see parentheses, I need you to get rid of them using the distributed property. So if you see parentheses and there's a number multiplying, multiplied by those parentheses, it's right next to it, you take that number and you distribute it to everything inside. At that point, you wanna look and see if you have any like terms that you can combine on either side of the equal sign. You can't combine like terms across the equal sign unless you're doing the opposite, but you can combine like terms on the left side of the equal sign together, and you can combine like terms on the right side of the equal sign together. At that point, you're gonna have an equation that looks familiar. Maybe it'll have a variable on both sides. Maybe it'll just be a two step. Maybe it'll just be a one step. You solve those the way you've been doing it this whole chapter. So take a look. Example number one, I'm gonna draw my line. And I'm going to go ahead, and we're going to want to keep change change wherever we can. So right here I see a negative 12, and add the opposite, and here I'll add the opposite. Now I don't see, number, number 2 says remove any parentheses. There aren't any parentheses. Number 3 says to combine like terms on either side of the equal sign. And here's what I mean. On the left side of the equal sign, we do have some like terms. Because there's not an equal sign between them, we can just go ahead and combine them. So this negative 2x will go with that 4x. And when you take negative 2 plus 4, it's 2. So that leaves me with 2x, and I still have that negative 12. On this side of the equal sign, 60 and negative 20 are like terms. 60 plus negative 20, or 60 minus 20, however you want to look at it, is 40. At this point, do you see how all we have left is a little two-step? So we're going to solve that. I want 2x by itself, so I'm going to add a positive 12. Those will cancel. And you're left with 2x equals... 52. This is a one step. You're going to divide by your 2. And x equals 2 goes into 5 twice with 1 left over, and 2 goes into 12 six times. So x equals 26. When you check this, and again, you could use your calculator to check it, that would be fine. Wherever you see an x, you're going to plug in 26. You would take negative 2 times 26, plus 4 times 26, plus negative 12, enter. And that's going to end up giving you 40. So it's kind of like that variable on both sides where you have to solve both sides. That's how you would check this. So plug in everywhere you see an X, put a 26. Make sure one side equals the other. All right, take a look at the next one. We're going to keep change, change. Again, I don't see any parentheses, but I do see like terms on either side of the equal sign. So I see that there's a negative 2N and a negative 8N. Those would go together to make negative 10N. And that 51 doesn't go with anybody, so we're just going to write it down. If I wrote 51 plus negative 10n, or 51 minus 10n, that's okay. The commutative property's got your back. All right, 20 plus 23 gives us 43. Again, we just have a little two-step now. So I want this negative 10n by itself first. That means I need to add a negative 51. And your 51s are going to cancel out because a negative 51 and a positive 51, gone. Now I need to take negative 10 in and bring it down. 43 plus 51. So I'm supposed to subtract those digits and take the sign of the greater. So 51 minus 43 is 8. And it's going to be a negative 8 because the greater digit's negative. At this point, we need to divide by negative 10. That's all that's left to do to get n by itself. And when you take a negative 8 divided by a negative 10, that gives you positive 8 tenths. I don't mind if you put the zero or not, as long as that decimal point is right next to the eight in front of it. All right, next one, draw your line. Again, there aren't any parentheses, but there is some subtraction that I need to change. So I'm gonna write plus negative here. And as I'm looking at this problem, on the left-hand side, I do see some like terms. I see a two and a negative 34. When you put those together, you get negative 32. And I have plus one half y left equals negative 12. This is still a nice little two-stepper. 
So in this two step, I want one half y alone, so I'm going to add 32 to each side. I'm left with one half y, and when you take a negative 12 plus a 32, again, you have to subtract the digits, so 32 minus 12 is 20, and take the sign of the greater, the greater digit's positive. All right, I have a fractional coefficient here, and when you see fractional coefficients, meaning the number is right next to the letter, and the number next to the letter is a fraction, fractional coefficient, I just need to multiply by the reciprocal to get rid of it. So I can multiply this by 2, or 2 over 1, if that's how you want to look at it. And on this side, I'm going to multiply by 2. Again, if you wanted to put the 1 underneath it, you could, you could, but 2 divided by 1 is 2. So those would cancel out, and y would be left as being 2 times 20, which is 40. And again, we check it the same way. You would just plug 40 in for that y and make sure this entire expression equals negative 12, which it does. All right, next, finally, some parentheses. Draw your line, change your signs. So we did keep change, change. Step two, get rid of parentheses. We do that by taking the number next to the parentheses and multiplying it through. So four times two x is eight x. Four times negative seven is negative 28. And I still have plus five. I'm not multiplying four by five because five is not inside the parentheses. That equals negative 39. Step three says to combine any like terms on either side of the equal sign. So I can see on the left-hand side of the equal sign that we have a negative 28 and a 5 that can go together. The 8x doesn't go with them because none of them have x's. So I'm going to bring down my 8x, and when you take negative 28 and you add 5 to it, you have to subtract the digits. So 28 minus 5 is 23. And you take the sign of the greater digit, which is negative. And that's going to equal negative 39. Nothing happens on the other side because there was just one little term there. It's just a two-step at this point. I want 8x alone, so I'm going to add 23. When you do that, these, this negative 23 and positive 23 cancel out. So I'm left with 8x. And when you take negative 39 plus 23, subtract the digits. So 39 minus 23 is 16. Take the sign of the greater digit. I have more negatives than positives. Now it's a one step. Divide by 8, because that's how you undo multiplying by 8 and you get x equals negative 2. And again, when you check this, you can type right in your calculator 4 and parentheses, 2 times negative 2 plus negative 7, close them, plus 5, enter, and you'll get negative 39. Practice that in class a lot, so I'm not going to practice it now. You know what, I got time for that. All right, number 11. I need to keep change, change. And step number two says get rid of parentheses. I don't have any over here, so I'm going to bring down that 11, but I do have some right here. So to get rid of these parentheses, negative 2 times x is negative 2x, negative 2 times 5 is negative 10, and we still have that negative 4x that's being added. So don't multiply that by negative 2 because it's not in the parentheses. Now step three says combine like terms on either side of the equal sign. This 11 is still alone. But you have a negative 2x and a negative 4x, which gives you negative, oops, 6x. I multiplied my accident. So negative 2 plus negative 4 is negative 6. Bring down that x. Plus negative 10. I have a two-step. I need negative 6x by itself. So we're going to add 10 to each side. 11 plus 10 is 21. I said that like a normal person. It's possible. And over here I have negative 6x left. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and divide each side by negative 6, because that's what you do when you have a multiplication equation, you divide. And when you take 21 and divide it by a negative 6, you end up getting negative 3.5. Decimals are okay. They are totally allowed. All right, last one. Can you believe it? Crazy. Add the opposite. Get rid of the parentheses first. Don't start trying to add the opposite of anything or combining like terms until you've gotten rid of the parentheses. So negative 5 times 4 is negative 20x. Negative 5 times negative 2 is 10. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 2 times 6x is negative 12x. Now the next thing you're supposed to do is look for like terms on either side of the equal sign. I know that these x's are like terms, but I can't just take negative 20 plus negative 12 because they're not on the same side together. So there aren't any like terms on this side, and there aren't any like terms on this side. But I do see I do have a variable on both sides. So we're going to take it from there. If you have a negative 20x over here and a negative 12x over here, you need to choose one of them to get rid of. I think I'm going to get rid of this negative 12x by adding a positive 12x. Because that's how you cancel things out. You add the opposite of them. 
So negative 20x plus 12x gives me negative 8x. I'm going to add my 10. And those are gone. Over here, I'm left with negative 6. It's just a two-step now. So I want to cancel out this positive 10 by adding a negative 10. Negative 8x is left. And negative 6 plus negative 10, add the digits, keep the sign. It's negative 16. We're going to divide both sides by negative 8, because negative 8 divided by negative 8 is 1, and 1x is x. And negative 16 divided by negative 8 is a positive 2. And again, to check it, you would plug it in over here. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 2 is 6. 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 plus 3 is 15. 15 times negative 2, negative 30. So you know that you're right. See ya.